Hello and welcome back to another practice problem video. So for practice problem videos, these are just going to go straight to the point and do harder problems that will help you either with your chemistry homework or for the more difficult problems to help you prepare for exams. In this particular video, we are going to focus on the math skills to ace chemistry. So we are going to be more likely diving into things like for US to metric conversions which were not covered previously in my other videos, cubed volume conversions, which are very commonly given in labs and in homeworks. And we will do a multi-step conversion showing how we do our thought process, how units can guide you. I hope this video helps and let's go on to our first example. All right, let's start our first example. So in this problem, we're going to convert 25 milliliters to quarts. And if you remember my unit conversion video or possibly on your handouts, you might have the different EUS to metric conversions available to you to try different problems. So for this one, we have to go from milliliters to quarts, meaning we have to try to bridge the gap between those two systems. So when you are looking for these tables, you need to try to find either your given or your desired units in them. So we started with milliliters, which was one, and we desire quarts. So when we go through this, we go to volumes right over here on the right hand side, we can see we have quarts right here, and that's linked to liters. So we have to bridge that gap, right? We have liters to quarts. So we have to go from milliliters to liters. So it's going to combine multiple conversions. Keep in mind, depending on the conversion you use here, it could affect your significant figures, meaning that we always have the decimal number here. So you see the 1.057, that is four sig figs. So if our original number is five or greater, that means that we'd have to round our final answer to four sig figs. But if your starting number is two, three, or four sig figs, you don't have to worry about it. So keep that in mind. It might affect your numbers. So let's try to do it. Convert 25 milliliters to quarts. Let's write down our given and, our des and all of our pieces. So we have 25 milliliters. We said before we had to go from milliliters to liters to quarts based on what we discussed. So we also have 1,000 milliliters is one liter, and we can define that conversion one of two ways. And then we also have liters to quarts from our table above, and that was 1.057 quarts is one liter, and we'll write that down here in the corner. So that was just from that, that little chart, so quarts and liters. And I'm not blocking that right now. Okay. So when we do that, we start with our given, which is the 25 milliliters. And what we're going to do, we're going to let the units guide your thinking, meaning your units need to be opposite and cancel. So if you think from before, right, we need to have it where they are opposite. So we need milliliters to all to be on the bottom and on the top, right? So we see milliliters on top right now. We need it to be opposite to cancel. So milliliters needs to be down here. So we need to find which one has milliliters on the bottom to lead to quarts. And when we are looking at these, we can see really quickly, all right, well, milliliters is right here. So let's use that one. So we have 1,000 mLs is one liter. We notice as a result, milliliters cancel. So that's what the highlighting means, that this is a cancel. We now have to use our next step. So now we have liters on one side on top. And then uh, so we need to put liters on the bottom to cancel that one out now. So when we do that next one, we got to then choose out of our terms on the other side. And we see liter is on bottom for the left hand conversion. So we will now have liters there. And then we will put our quartz on top. When we do that, we see liters cancels liters. Awesome. And we are left with the unit that we want. Now, earlier I mentioned sig figs. Doesn't matter right now. Let's count. So our first number, we have one, two, three, four sig figs. 
And then on our court number, we have four sig figs. Now, whenever we have a metric conversion to metric, they're exact. You do not have to worry about it. So with one liter to milliliters, it does not affect our calculation. So we don't have to worry about anything crazy. We just have to make sure we round to four sig figs for this particular problem. So when we are doing that, right, we have we are going to be doing the math here. So we have 25 times that 1.057 divided by 1000. So when you go through that, what you are going to get is it's going to be equal to 2.65 times 10 to the negative 2 quarts. Or you might have just have gotten on your calculator 0 0.0265 as your answer. And being that we want to make sure that is in the correct number of significant figures here, uh, we would have to put an extra zero at the end here. So I've kind of made a little mistake on my own, on my own notes. So, and that would be our final answer for this particular problem. For our next problem, we are going to go into a cubed conversion problem, which is a very common one homeworks. So let's get to that one. This one's a harder one. Now, why is that? So I chose this one on purpose as our last problem because it is tough. And the whole idea of why this makes it hard is because we are dealing with cubed functions. There is no straightforward conversion between a cubed function. Especially if you look on any of your reference sheets, you have length, volumes, uh, time, but cubed is something that doesn't quite come naturally. And why is that? Well, let's think about this. So it says our, what we are given is we have meters cubed. And then we desire centimeter cubed. And you might think like, okay, well, can I just say that one meter cubed is equal to 100 centimeters cubed? And answers, no, you, you actually can't. So let me prove to you why. So if we have, let's say, a line, and we say that this line is five meter, or let's even go simpler. Let's say this line is one meter. All right, well, if I say that line is one meter, well, how many centimeters is it? Well, it's a hundred centimeters. That's the conversion. Great. Now, what if I asked you, what about if I square it? So if I now make this a squared function, where I make the other side one meter with a hundred centimeters, well, how do I find the square meters here? Just like the square footage of maybe your room that you're in. So how would you do that? Well, it's length times width. So if I do that, it will be one meter times one meter, which is equal to meters squared. Or we show it as 100 centimeters times 100 centimeters. And that would be equal to 10,000 centimeter squared, right? So when we show that, they are not equal. They're very much different. And we just squared it. We haven't even cubed it yet. So they're very different. Let's now go one step farther. So if, now if I take my cube, or sorry, not my cube, my square, and now I want to cube it. Or now we have some depth to it. I'm best to be artistic here, kind of failing. So if we do that, right, every part is one meter. And now every other length is 100 centimeters. We do the same math to find the volume, right? But instead, the volume is length times width times height now. So when we do that, we're going to see that, all right, well, if I do one meter times one meter, times one meter, this is going to be one meter cubed. And if I do the same thing for centimeters, so 100 times 100 times 100, this is now 1 million centimeters cubed, which is very much different than what the other option is. So when we are doing this problem, this here on the bottom here is our conversion factor. So one meter cubed is 10 to the six meter cubed. 
and we have to use that for our problem. So this is something I'd write down, right? So you don't have to do that every time. But be aware that you have that when it comes to cubes, you have to derive it. And that's for every cubed function. It's not just a normal conversion. So going back to our problem before, right? If I have five meters cubed, we can cancel that out, right? Being that we said that one meter cubed was equal to 10 to the six centimeter cubed. And we can now see that meters cubed cancels meters cubed. And let me uh, rewrite this. So we'll show meters cancels meters and the cubes cancel. So just to kind of illustrate, they need to actually cancel. So what this makes our final answer to be is five times 10 or 5.00 times 10 to the six centimeter cubed. That is our answer, right? So that was a lot of work for one little problem. All right, so for this problem, we are going to do a multi-step conversion. This is pretty as close as you can get to an official dimensional analysis problem. It just took out the word problem part. So what this one says is we want to convert 32.5 miles per hour to centimeters per millisecond. So we have to do a top and bottom conversion. So with this, let's write down what is given. So we have 32.5 miles per hour, and we need to convert miles to centimeters and hours to milliseconds. So when you are doing these, the first key or first tip is do one conversion at a time, meaning that when you kind of look at these, you have distance on top and time on the bottom. You want to either do distance all distance until you get to your final unit or do all time until you get to your to your final unit so do one conversion at a time so let's set this up so and it would be really helpful if you have any of your little unit sheets so that way you can try to see how you how you can find those conversions one of the hardest parts is just setting up the problem finding the conversions so we have our 32.5 miles that will be over an hour, so that's one hour, right? So MPH, miles per hour, if you think of your speedometer. So let's first to start with, let's do miles first. So with this one, the first thing is, is all right, well, how many, let's try to think of a way how to get the centimeters. Well, if we try to map it out for ourselves, we can go from miles, we can go to feet, we can go to inches, and then to centimeters. So we can do Three steps, which is a long one, but at least it helps show our process, which is important. So, all right, if we have one mile, how many feet are in a mile? Well, look on your sheet, right? Or you can do a little Google search. <laughs> Either way, when you look that up, you see there'll be 5,280 feet in one mile. Miles cancels. Now for feet into inches. Well, for every one foot, there are 12 inches. So one foot cancels feet, right? Let the units guide you. We can see that they will cancel. Now we do our next step, which is centimeters. So for centimeters, oops, that is the wrong one. So for centimeters, we have is one inch is 2.54 centimeters. So one thing you always notice is that the smaller unit tends to have more and then the bigger unit is always one to make it simple, right? Make it easier, but let those units push you to how to cancel. Okay, so we now have it in centimeters. So great, that is one of our units, one down. Now we gotta do milliseconds. So we start with hours. This one should be simple, right? You probably look at the clock every single day of your life, right? You can tell time. So if we do the first one, well, let's map it out again. So if we would want to go from hours to minutes to seconds to milliseconds. So we have one hour is 60 minutes. And you can continue the calculation down the lane. They don't have to be uh, one after an another. So keep that in mind. So hour cancels hours, so notice how far apart of the problem they are, but they still cancel. 
right? They're still opposite of each other. Even though it's four steps down, they still cancel. So, and then we'll have, um, we need to cancel minutes next. So we have for every one minute is 60 seconds. And then we can try to highlight that. So we have minutes cancel. And now for seconds, so for every one second, we have 1,000 milliseconds, which is our very last part. And let's get a color that I have not used. We use blue. The so seconds cancel. And now we're left for milliseconds. Look how crazy long this is. There's one, two, three, four, five, six steps for this problem. But the one thing is noticing the units are canceling, right? So you can see even the hours cancel each other. And I'm going to just put like a maybe kind of illustrate that with a line, right? You can kind of see how far apart those are. The miles cancel each other. The feet cancel. The inches cancel. The minutes cancel. The seconds cancel. So now you got to solve it. Put it in your calculator. That's the tough part. So the way to put this in your calculator is you would say you would, if you follow along, is you multiply the top parts. So it's 32.5 times 5,280 times 12 times 2.54 times 1 times 1 times 1. Okay, so you hit equals on that. And then what you're going to do is divide by 60, hit equal, divide by 60, hit equal, and then divide by 1,000. So do one step at a time because your calculator will follow it. And make sure that while you're going through it, you're entering the correct values. It's really easy to accidentally mess up a value. Okay. And the other thing is we will have how many sig figs here? Um, so we have three sig figs. This is all within US units. So that's exact. This is US to US exact. This one, even though it's metric to inches, this is the one exact conversion there is between US to metric. And all the rest are exact. So they don't affect it. So we'll have three of them. So when you solve this, you should get 1.45 centimeters per millisecond is your final answer. Okay. And that's how you solve a multi-step conversion. Well, there will be more in other videos. So if you go to my dimensional analysis video, um, which this video will come out before that one, but it's probably maybe by the time you're viewing this, it will already be out. So look for that in my math skills to ace chemistry playlist if you need any help with your math so that way you can practice them okay and thank you so much i hope this video helps you